I wanted a bike with the 1989 Stump Jumper colorway for a while, but all the ones that I've seen for sale have been too small. I got, I got long legs. So this is what happened when I got too impatient. Beautiful day to pick up a new bike. Well, apart from the grips being pretty sticky and the shifters are awkward as, but it's the right size, the right price, and it's available now, so I don't have to keep waiting for a stump jumper in my size. <laughs> so it's a specialized hard rock. I think it's about a 1990. I've had a few hard rocks before of different years, and I still have two others. So I know that they ride nicely, although they're not as sought after as the stump jumper. Which really works out in my favour as they don't cost as much. I picked it up nearby for a good price. It was in a bit of a state as you can see, but it was rideable. Nothing a lot of time and money couldn't fix. So the first hurdle was getting the seat post out. So I let it sit with some penetrating oil in it for a bit while I stripped the rest of it. Definitely drew for a touch up. So this is definitely easier to do with someone else, but it is possible to do solo. Ow. Although you'll probably hurt yourself more. I'm glad it wasn't that stuck though, so it came off pretty easily. This fork I'm testing is a lugged tange fork that I got from a friend. It had been sitting around for a while at my place and this looks like it'll fit perfectly so it'll be a nice little upgrade. So now it's all stripped of its parts, I start to strip the paint. The easiest way to remove stubborn decals is to just sand them off. Scuffing the paint also helps the paint stripper work. So I go over the whole frame with the 80 grit. So I've stripped a few frames and this seems to be the easiest way apart from just paying a sandblaster to do it. It's the least labor intensive. Paint stripper gets the vast majority of it off and then you just give it a scuff again. And then before painting I taped up everything that I didn't want to paint in and obviously all the threads as well. I just tuck some old BB cups in and some old bolts into all the old bosses. I decided to try spray dot bike. It's a powdered coating quite different to regular spray paint. So I've picked up the cold zinc primer, which is the only primer that they had in stock. This is the Milan Celadon 2, the Quasar Pink. <laughs> and then I have some, some of their satin. Well, it's, yeah, as you can see here, I'm probably gonna do two or more coats because I would like it kind of glossy. So I had no idea which color to pick. I ended up with the multi. I think I should have gone for the silver or the gold. So this is wrong. Don't do this. Um, at these clips, I'm too far away and I'm the wrong technique. It turned out too thin in spots and too thick in others. The best results, just read the instructions and then watch a professional's video. <laughs> lightly. It says you can use 1500 grit on this. I'm just barely pressing down. I really just want to mainly go over the joins. It seems 
this is where the build up seems to be. Obviously as you go over and then you change direction into the next tube, the, it's a little bit thicker around the joints. It sort of goes to a dust. That makes sense because it's powder. So the fork I did after the frame and it turned out really nicely once I got a hang of it. And then the frame ended up nice after I touched it up a couple of times. So it's all being wet sanded now. It's smooth, there are no buildups of like the dust or powder. So in this clip, I'm doing it wrong. I'm not close enough and I'm feathering it off to the edges. But here I'm much closer and I'm more definite with the spraying. So you don't have to feather it over to the edge to make it not run. I think I managed to get a few runs in the clear coat, but in the paint color, I didn't get any runs and I thought I was being way too thick. So that's a little bit too far away here. Yeah. So you can see where you've gone too far away because it ends up as a dust buildup. So you can wet sand it. I was using 1500 grit to wet sand it just to smoothen it off. So I ended up with two coats of color and sort of one and a bit of the primer coat. The hard part was trying to get the fade in the right spot. So in the 1989 Stump Jumper, it's not really a fade, it's just a hard line underneath the decal. But I wanted a fade with a little bit of detail in. So I was sort of guessing where the line had to be. So I was just going off by photos. So I thought I'd try a pretty random splotched fade. I was also going to do a bit of paint splatter, but I decided just the splotches was enough detail. I wanted it to be a little bit different from the Stump Jumper original, but not too different. So it came out pretty nice, it's sort of different. It would have been better to have the decals so I knew where the placement of the fade would have been, and then I could have done the color and all the splotches accordingly. So after that it was time to throw on the flake. It's really hard to show this in the video, but the flake in person looks so good. And this is the multicolor one as well. You can actually see the different colored flakes. Cool, 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 cool. I've got the centers of the tubes marked where I want all the decals to be. And I've got a rough approximation so the masking is the limit. So wish me luck, I guess. Putting on these decals, seeing all the colors in front of me, contrasting, popping, it was an awesome feeling. It reminded me of when I first felt a build truly come together. The satisfaction of it being just an image in your head, developing into something physically in front of you, is so satisfying. So the V decals, decals were pretty easy to install. Just follow the instructions, they're pretty well thought out. The hardest thing is probably marking all the tubes for where you want them to be centered. But as you can see, they turned out really well. This specialized one is a little bit too high, but it doesn't bug me at all.
it was all going pretty smoothly. All the decals went on nicely. The specialized one along the top tube was a little bit too high when viewed from the right hand side. So it's probably only about two millimeters off. The only thing that didn't go smoothly is I forgot to put a brake hanger in the headset. So I had originally planned to use a specialized stem that has the built-in cable stop, but it turned out the handlebar clamp thread was cross-threaded. So I had a quick look around and I found this Nitto stem that came on an old Cannondale that I was planning to use on something else, but it was just the right length, so I put that on. to make sure those bottom bracket threads are nice and greased, but not too much. Up here, you'll see me turn the bottom bracket the wrong way until the threads catch, making sure that I don't cross thread it, and then put it in. I do the same thing with the headset and a couple of other parts as well. You don't really have to do it with brake bolts and bottle cage bolts. I thought while I was at it, I might as well give these cranks a quick polish up. So I did another video about polishing cranks, but with these ones I started at 1000 grit and I went up to 5000 grit. And then I cleared them just to seal it. Otherwise they just end up oxidizing back to that old hazy finish. This hides it better in some lights, but with the light shining down on it at an angle, it almost does nothing. <laughs> and this is when I remembered that I needed something as a cable stop for my front brakes. So I pulled that die comp one off the same bike that the stem came from. It's a quick release old die comp one, but it doesn't really dick, uh, quick release anymore. It doesn't really dick release anymore. <laughs> So this is how I like to attach front racks and front baskets to my bikes. This little bracket basically acts as a, a weak point, so instead of breaking off the eyelets on your fork, it'll just bend that and then you can easily replace the bracket. Although with saying that, I haven't bent this bracket before, and this came off the hard rock that most of the parts of this bike came from, and it was on there for over a year I think and it had been loading up loaded up to 20 kilograms not all the time but it always had a front load in it
This front carrier is just your basic rear carrier that's slightly modified. Basically, I just shortened it a bit and bent the edges in. Two bolts in that now. And that hole there is threaded for M4. So now I've just got to secure the legs down the bottom and then bend that to mate up. Everything's tight with the basket on. There are a few ways to secure it. You can either make up a bracket to strap it down and then bolt it through to the rack. You can temporarily strap it. But I've used cable ties on a few of my baskets now and I haven't had any issues with them. So this barrel adjuster didn't quite accept this brake barrel so I drilled it out with a 5.5mm drill bit and now it fits nice and snug. Some of these bits are really hard to show on camera without getting in the way and that so uh, some of the techniques are a little bit different to what I normally use. This cable unwound but you can just wind it back as long as it hasn't bent or anything. Now this is why I put the basket on first, because to get from the shifter down to the first cable stop on the down tube, it's good. You got like all these awkward angles and it's just not good. So when routing your cables you really don't want any strange kinks. You want the curves to be nice and flowing, so by running it through the basket it keeps optimum cable feel, which will drastically change how your shifting and braking feels. Now it's only affecting the shifters on this, but even so, I still want it to be as nice feeling as I can.
ASI variants, but I've painted them the same color as the frame. So the test went well, it cruised beautifully, nice and supple ride. The only thing was the bottom bracket was a smidge too narrow. So you'll see in some of these clips that there's paint missing from the chain stair. It's since been swapped to a 115mm one and the paint's been touched up. There are a few things left to do on it, such as the seat binder bolt. I'm going to add some padding to the basket so when it contacts the frame it doesn't do any damage and a few other little bits and bobs. I'll try another set of fenders because the ones that I had for it didn't quite fit. They're just a little bit too narrow for the wider 2.3 DTHs. And then eventually I'll upgrade to some Gravel King SK tires. Probably when it's closer to summer again. But that's all I have for you today. So thanks for watching. Leave any comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. This 1988 stump jumper isn't mine, but I thought I'd throw in a quick little clip showing some of the differences and just the size difference.